My name is Philip. I run a company called WeFlow, and we help Salesforce customers to supercharge their CRM and set it up for success. And what I mean with that is we help them with proper pipeline inspection, forecasting, and also activity capturing. Because activity capturing really is a foundational element of getting to a really, really good CRM. Uh, because you want to have insights into all those meetings and emails that are exchanged between reps and prospects because they tell you a lot about whether a deal is moving forward and is moving in the right direction so we're going to focus on einstein activity capture and connecting that to your google workspace einstein is a solution provided by salesforce out of the box it comes with a few flaws but it is the most simple and basic way of achieving capturing your activities so let's dive right into it in order to get started with einstein activity capture you need to have someone who has admin access to Salesforce. So someone who can access this setup area that I'm in here right now. And also someone who has access to Google Workspace as an admin with the ability to install Google Workspace Marketplace applications. If you do not have that person, if you do not have those permissions, you need to get somebody first in order to continue. Now, if you have access to the admin area of Salesforce, what you want to do is you want to sign into your Salesforce account, uh, click on this little icon here at the top, click on setup. Uh, this will lead you to the main starting page of the setup area in Salesforce. And then here in the quick find, you want to search for Einstein, which will yeah show up a lot of like different parts. But what you are interested in is the Einstein activity capture and you want to click on settings. So here is where the journey begins. So click on settings. It should look something like this. Click on the get started button. Uh, make sure that you're authorized to accept this on behalf of your company. And then once you accept this, then you can select the email and calendar service that you want to connect. In this case, we're interested in Google Workspace or Google G Suite as it's called here in uh, Salesforce still. So you click on the, you select this and you click on the next button. Then you have two different options to do this. So one is on a user by user level. And the other one is by installing the Google Workspace Marketplace application. If you do it on a user by user level, then each individual user needs to connect their account to Salesforce. So if you're a large organization, this can be very, very complicated and add a lot of overhead cost because it takes a lot of time to get everybody through that um, process of setting things up. You need to double check if it's actually correct the way they set it up. So it's a lot easier to just pick the Google Workspace Marketplace application. This is also the focus of this video. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now, next up, you need to connect Salesforce to Google. So in order to do that, you need to log in as an admin and then select the users for whom you actually want the implementation to work. And in order to do that, you need to install the Google Workspace Marketplace application. So I'm going to click on that button and it's going to forward me to Salesforce Einstein activity capture. This is an application by Salesforce. It's the official application. So there's no risk involved here. And all you need to do is just click on admin install, uh, click on continue. And then what you want to do is you want to accept this on behalf of either everyone in your organization or just on specific groups. I'm going to pick everyone in the organization because that's just the easiest and fastest way to do it. And uh, you can still fine tune and select who actually should have um, uh, this working and have enabled. So uh, even if you select everyone in your organization, it will not automatically be enabled for everyone in your organization. You still need to pick the individual people. So I'm going to click on finish. It's going to take a few seconds and voila, that's it. It's done. It's installed and I can always access it up from here. Yeah. So by clicking on this icon here at the top, you can scroll down, you can go here and this will forward you to um, basically the admin section of Salesforce. Okay, now installed the app. I've done this. So now I can go back to Salesforce and I can click on the next button. Now I can give this whole thing a name. I'm just going to call it Google Workspace EAC. EAC standing for Einstein Activity Capture and I'm going to hit the next button. And now you have some options to actually say when and what you want to be want to have synced. Now, in my case, I'm interested in emails and events. I'm not so interested in contacts. I don't want Salesforce to automatically create contacts for me. That's quite risky. So I want that to be in disabled. But if you wanted to have enabled, you can absolutely have that. I generally recommend not to do it. And also for the events, I only want them to go from the Google suite to Salesforce because otherwise um, any event that is created in Salesforce will also be forwarded to 
Google. So if I create manual events in Salesforce to sort of like maybe um, ad, hoc, ad hoc log a meeting uh, manually, it will create an event in the Google Suite uh, in my Google Calendar, and I don't want that, so I'm just selecting Google Suite to Salesforce. This is generally the best practice to select. And then for emails, I just keep it enabled. So if you have those two flags enabled, for now, that's a good starting point. This is the safe way to play it, and nothing can break if you choose these settings. Now hit the Next button. Now you can select by how long actually Salesforce should go back in time and look for emails that can be matched to your CRM. Um, 180 days, I think, is plenty for most. Um, if you are a large organization, then of course a longer time frame would be nice. Uh, Salesforce doesn't offer that. Uh, there are other solutions like WeFlow, for example. We do offer that, um, but here in this case, you can only select 180 days, and then you can do the same also for meetings. So I'm going to pick that two, those two options, 180 days, and I also want to select the sync event series. Because what this will do is if I have recurring events, like maybe I have an account manager in my organization and they have like a regular check-in once uh, per quarter, I want those event series also to be tracked. So I, this is why I have this on. If you don't want this, just leave it unchecked. And I also want to remove deleted events because um, if someone accidentally creates a meeting or a meeting is canceled, then, you know, or there's a no-show, I actually don't want that to be tracked. Um, so this is why I also have this on. Now you can also define some conditions when a contact actually should be created, but I disabled the contact creation, so I'll leave this off for now. Now I hit the next button. And now what um, Salesforce does is it now compa compares Google Workspace and your directory in Salesforce and looks for matching options. In this case, I don't have any, but I have some profiles. So you can either do this via users and they would just show up here and you can select them, or you can pick entire profiles. So if you have like an account executive profile or any other profile that would make sense for you, you can just pick that profile and then uh, Einstein Activity Capture will work for anyone automatically who's using this specific profile. Using profiles, again, is the best practice here. You don't wanna go back and forth between like picking individual users. Um, you wanna use a profile uh, because then automatically all the users who are added to this profile will also have Einstein Activity Capture working for them. Now, the last thing you wanna do is you wanna define some internal domains, like in our case, it's getreflow.com, and uh, maybe you also have some customer domains then you want to exclude, or maybe some specific email domains. Okay, and then you just hit the next button, um, and then you can define also finally the default activity sharing options. So whether others should see it or not. Personally, I think others should see it. This is useful information. You want that to be shared in your organization. So unless it's confidential in some sort, um, it's better to share it than not to share it. And then uh, once you've done that, you're done. You can click on the finish button. And now Einstein Activity Capture will start working for your Salesforce account. Okay, and now we're back in the settings and you can always go back to your configuration by going here in configurations, clicking edit, and then you can manage the different profiles that you wanna add and remove. Uh, you can go back to the advanced settings. So looking at sort of like the time uh, sync back as well as uh, enabling or disabling these specific options. Like mentioned earlier, you can always go back and enable contact syncing. You can change the uh, sync here in the different directions, and you can also delete the entire configuration. Another way to disable Einstein Activity Capture, should you need to do that, is to go here and just toggle this off entirely. In addition to everything we configured already, I do recommend to enable the Activities Dashboard. Um, so the way that Einstein Activity Locking works is those activities are actually not properly stored in your Einstein account. You need to enable specific reporting um, via this activities dashboard. Otherwise, you will not be able to report on Einstein activities or activities captured via Einstein. So make sure to uh, toggle this on um, by default. Now, if you want to use Einstein activity capture, not on a pro profile basis, but actually on a user by user basis, then you need to assign permission sets to these users. In order to do that, uh, in Quick Find, search for permission sets, click here on permission sets, this will load uh, this list here. And now be careful, there's two different types of Einstein activity capturing. This one, this is the wrong one because this is for an integration user, 
we want to actually use the one that is typically on the second page and it's called the standard Einstein activity capture permission set. Now click on that, then click on manage assignments and then here click on add assignment at the top and select the users uh, you want to use Einstein activity capture, click on next. Uh, you can set expiration dates if you like and then finally click on assign. Now when we go back now to the Einstein activity capture settings, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click on my configuration to edit this. You can now see that um, I can now, in addition to selecting the profiles, I can also select individual users. So you need to make sure to either assign the permissions beforehand or afterwards in order to use the user by user assignment. If you just want to use profiles, that's fine. You don't need to assign the permission sets, but on a user by user basis, you absolutely need to have these permission sets assigned. Now I want to throw in a little caveat here, and that is that even though Einstein Activity Capture is not bad per se, it is not the most powerful solution out there. In fact, there is a whole lot of things that Einstein does not do. For example, you cannot do standard reporting. You cannot permanently store activities. You cannot migrate all that activity data into the record. You don't have them actually stored in Salesforce, but in some random S3 bucket that you do not have access to. And this is also why you cannot report on it. You cannot like easily look at the activity timeline. You cannot match emails to multiple addresses with a single record. There's a bunch of things and issues that Einstein Activity Capture has. And we're not the only ones who are saying that. You have just have to search for Einstein Activity Capture and you quickly stumble upon a lot of these threads around reporting issues. Basically, Einstein Activity Capture and just stopping to work, uh, having issues with manual logging because that's suddenly not possible anymore as soon as you activate Einstein. And also just a lot of problems that when you deactivate Einstein, suddenly all those emails that were logged in the past, they're gone forever. So there are a lot of problems with Einstein. And this is also why there are providers like WeFlow who solve that problem in a better way. So I encourage you to check out getweflow.com. Uh, you can run a free trial with us, take it for just a little test drive and see how it does. We are very confident in our solution and we want you to take control of your Salesforce activity data.